Hello and welcome to Finance Conversation. This is the 18th episode of the Merging Life and Money Show and I am super excited to be here with you today. For those of you who do not know me, I am your host, Marie-Jo César. I help frustrated professional women acquire and apply the relevant financial skills and knowledge they need to control, uh, to take control of their money from the inside out and manage their finances and also understand that they can live their best life with the money they have. Thank you for joining in today. If you are watching the replay, make sure to type hashtag replay in the chat and leave me some comments and questions. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. I come to you live every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to share valuable information about how to achieve financial wellness and live your life with means and meaning. Today's show is the fifth episode of the new series titled The Scoop on Women and Money. I will attempt to demystify women's money habits and uncover if fear holds them back from making or managing their money successfully. So grab a pen and a notebook as you might want to take some notes to discuss further with family members, friends, colleagues, etc. because it is about sharing values that could benefit others. So if you have any comments and questions, make sure to put them in the chat. And if you want to talk to me directly, I will share my contact information a little later in the show. So as you know, the main objective of the Merging Life and Money show and my strong why is to empower as many women as possible with what I know about money and finance. So before getting into today's subject matter, which is demystifying women's money habits, I would like to note that if the pandemic has taught us anything, it's to stop and evaluate our lives, get clarity on what's essential, and turn our focus to what matters. Your financial habits have far-reaching consequences for your family, yourself, and your future. Therefore, it is crucial to get mental, um, you know, your mental game together and reassess your financial habits. Remember that your financial security matters. I will focus on three points today, okay? Uh, misconception about women's relationship with money, uh, common money habits that do not serve women, and the slow financial paradigm shift observed in women of late. So why are women stereotyped as being terrible with money? The stereotypes of women being bad with money likely have their root, I would say, in this ancestral male control family finances, which in my opinion has become absolute since over the past 30 years, I would say, women have increased their presence in the housing market, for example, with a home ownership rate of households led by women rising, while the home ownership rate of households led by men is falling. As a matter of fact, st statistics show that the marriage rate has declined and more women are household heads. In 1990, only 32.5% of households were headed by women. Over the next three decades, the share of households headed by women increased 17% and by 2019, Households headed by women accounted for half of all households. And this trend holds true across all racial and ethnic groups, with black households having the highest share of households headed by women, and that is 
even though we are witnessing a cultural shift as it relates to people's attitude toward money, gender stereotypes are still well and alive. Okay, you may be surprised at just how much your gender still determines your attitude towards your money. Although there is nothing inherently different between men and women from a financial capacity standpoint. So what's vastly different are the cultural messages that we have experienced growing up and the different men versus women messages you continue to get about money as adults and in the workforce. So childhood is a primary source of this cultural split. Many girls, right, lose interest in math at an early age, which ultimately leads to less confidence when it comes time to think about money in a way that significantly relates to earnings, saving, spending, borrowing, and especially investing. Additionally, it is your financial confidence of how much you think you know that defines many of your money decisions. And of course, men tend to express greater financial confidence than women in their money expertise because they receive cultural messages that lead them to believe that they know more than they really do. So for many women, a lack of confidence often leads to a more cautious approach. Additionally, women tend to be better than men at recognizing what they don't know, which is a huge plus for women, especially when it comes to making complicated retirement income decisions. Also, women tend to see money as a means to certain ends, while men see money as an end within itself. As a result, women use money as a tool to free up time and purchase things they desire. They often calculate the money they must have based on what they need and what they want to save. On the other hand, men often have goals that are purely financial in nature. For example, they would say that, um, um, what, what, what I think of, that their goal, for example, to save, their goal is to save $2,000, for example, this month. So the figure, right? The number is a goal, rather than what can be done with it. Another fact is that over the course of their lifetime, men save more than three times what women save. So why such a big discrepancy? Because while women save and contribute more than men to their employees' retirement plans, they earn less than men. And many of them take more time off when children are young, and as a result, they get behind in their savings while out, out of the workforce, right? So women are significant, significantly more worried about outliving their money than their male counterpart as well, as having enough assets saved up for emergency expenses in retirement than men, especially for health-related expenses. Also, many women are more cautious with how they invest because they feel that the stock market is far too complex and dangerous for most small investors to succeed. Instead, they stick to savings accounts and other fixed income products that seem to be safer and much less volatile than gambling with their nest egg in the stock market. You will also find that uh, women prefer to keep their money in cash with greatly well, uh, which really, really affects them as they go older, since the silent killer there, the inflation, 
It's at the value of cash over time, and money kept in cash misses out on any market growth. This so this can easily translate into circa $500,000 gap in retirement. Lastly, it is important to note that awareness about shopping habits and their effect can lead to better money management. Spending habits throughout your life greatly influence um, your financial future and most of them have to do with your purchasing activities. Yet again, another characteristic that often relates to gender. So according to a study conducted by the Wharton Business School, when it comes to shopping, women are from large drums and men are from sales. Now they have to find another, another one for guys because sales is on its way out, or out, I should say. They also observe that men buy and women shop. So what does this mean? So for men, shopping is a mission. They are out to buy a targeted item and flee the store as quickly as possible. And women are happy to meander through the department on their way to maybe making a purchase. It was also noted that men are less likely to compare some shop. They are quicker to click on the checkout button while online shopping. And they actually spend significantly more on impulse purchases. Additionally, according to a recent report published by Experian, you know, the credit report company, they said that men had 4.3% more debt than women, took out bigger mortgages than women, and were late uh, on their payment more often than women. But yet again, somehow, men do not seem to encounter much criticism about their spending habits. All right, over to the, the second point that I want to talk about today, the common money habits that do not serve women. So as uh, we all know, habits are the regular tendencies we have that are hard to break, right? They are the things we do over and over without even thinking about. Our habits shape our lives, right? Both for the good and for the bad. So no matter what area of your life you are trying to improve on, there needs to be a sharp focus on breaking bad habit and forming good ones. If you currently possess any of the following bad money habits that I'm with you um, state um, in a few minutes, you need to work on replacing them with positive habits that will move you closer to your financial goals. So I think I identify how many, uh, about uh, seven of them. Spending money um, more than you earn, okay? Spending more money than you earn. So spending more than you earn is the cardinal sin of personal finance. This one habit will have a trickle down effect causing big problems in all areas of your personal finances. For instance, if you spend more than you earn, you'll have to rely on credit to cover the rest, okay? So the credit comes with interest and traps you into debt. So you continue spending more than you earn, creating a bigger, more vicious cycle. So if you currently spend more than you earn, this needs to be the very first thing you address. Don't even worry about anything else until you are living within your means. Okay, so for, for some, this will mean new spending habits. And for those on a really tight budget, it will mean earning more money. Okay, so go look for a hustle, pick up a side gig, do whatever you have to do, but please, please leave, leave within your means. 
The second one is relying on credit to pay your bills. Okay, so it's okay. Okay, I'm, I'm going to pay. It's okay as long as you pay the balance at the end in full at the end of the month, right? Otherwise, it, it is not going to work. So credit is expensive, and if not used properly, it is a trap. Okay, so if you are using credit to cover basic things like food or rent, or you are using it for mindless purchases like vacation, new clothes, new shoes, uh, you need to remedy the situation, okay? So while it's true that at some point you might need to rely on debt, say for a mortgage, education expenses, on investment property, um, it should be done with extreme care and planning. So do not use credit cards or any other form of debt to cover your bills. Three, not being prepared for an emergency. If there is one thing you can count on, is that at some point or another, something will go wrong. An accident will happen, a job will be lost, or an appliance will break. So being prepared for an emergency is very, very important when it comes to your finances. You don't want to be caught off guard, okay? Financially, anyway, you don't want to be caught, caught, caught off guard. Save up some cash for emergencies. Four, paying your bill late, okay? So while it can happen to the best of us, right? Paying your bills late is a very bad habit to have as it affects your credit score and your credit report and cost you more money in late fees and interest charges. So also it can stay on your credit report for the better of seven and a half years. So make it a habit of always paying your bills on time. If you are the type of person who simply procrastinates with tasks like this, consider enrolling in auto pay. Okay, it also, it also means you probably need to get financially organized so that you never miss another bill again. Five, failing to save for the future. Right, so we all know or heard the saying, there's a little saying like, hashtag YOLO, you only live once, and hashtag FOMO, fear of missing out, can make you feel like you need to spend all of your money and spend it now. So why save for the future instead of living for now, right? Well, wrong, okay? When it comes to money, there need to be balance, okay? So shouting YOLO at the top of your, of your lungs will not magically make you have a great life in retirement or help you build wealth. Enjoy life now, but also be sure to save for the future and diligently work towards your goals. Six, blaming others for your circumstances. Well, life is not fair, right? It is a phrase we have all heard before and one we've likely said to ourselves. And it is completely 100% true. We've all been born into different circumstances, some of us having many more opportunities than others, right? So, but while life is not fair, it's true, blaming other people is not going to help you at all, at all, at all. So accept where you are at and play the cards you've been given. Only compare yourself to yourself. And seven, I'm going to stop at seven, making excuses. Do not let excuses hold you back. You have the choice to work toward building the life and finances you want or to make excuses, right? The choice is yours. Whatever you do, choose wisely. 
So when it comes to breaking bad money habits, it can sometimes be easier to replace those bad habits with new good ones. Just taking it down to the basics, okay? Live within your means, avoid consumer debt, and save for the future. If you can accomplish those three things, you will be in a good place. Now, let's explore the third point, the slow fa financial paradigm shift that um, we've observed here in women. So today's relationship between gender roles and money stem back to the role women have long played with their family's finance. Uh, women were told that it was their husband's job to handle the money. Similarly to uh, the way previous generation viewed science, technology, engineering, and math, right? Being men jobs or men occupation. Guys, it is a 21st century, okay? And women are more empowered than ever. They are flying plane, they are fighting enemies at the border, and they are spearheading global business empires. Therefore, there should not be any reason as to why women should be dependent on their spouses or parents for money-related decisions. The husband's jobs to handle the money just cannot be an excuse any longer. Okay? So what happened if he get hit by a boss, for example, God forbid, right? Because, uh, or he becomes sick, for example, or he decided to get a divorce. So you would be stuck because you chose not to engage and understand where you are financially. So you must not forget that knowledge is power. So pretty please empower yourself. Like any stereotype, this trend is not universally true, but it's frequent enough that it warrants questioning. So while I was um, researching why we are here as a society, I was able to identify some of the, some pretty notable, I would say not, noteworthy key trends. And I, I think I looked at five of them. So the first one was women who are not in a senior leadership position have less risk tolerance than their male partners in a relationship. And a higher level of knowledge tends to be associated with greater risk tolerance in the market. So could that be that greater income leads to greater awareness about investing, which in turn leads to greater knowledge of how to invest wisely? Tell me what you think. Put it in the chat. The second one um, that I noticed in a, in a couple, if the woman earns more, she typically has a greater tolerance for risk than her partner. And statistics show that this holds true for both same sex or opposite sex couple. The third trend that I uh, observe, women are almost universally more open to discussing risk management issues such as the possibility of running out of money in retirement based on current saving strategies and the potential implication for their long-term finances when they or their partner dies. Fourth one, women tend to be very conscious of the financial impacts on family and finances if they were a long-term health event. And lastly, women are more open to someone educating them in plain language about investment um, because they truly tend to openly admit that they don't fully understand how investment works. So we are now witnessing a cultural, um, I would say, shift 
particularly with the millennial generation, right? We see a matching shift in engagement as individuals of both genders actively participate in obtaining a basic understanding of economic principles and knowledge um, of how money works. Those with the knowledge will become more prosperous. Okay, this has been um, demonstrated by the statistic. And the one that will not engage will get poor. So at the end of the day, you have to live a financially conscious life. Okay, if you want to have a say in your future, you must design it and develop a true understanding of what you financially and why, regardless what you have financially, and why, regardless of your age, gender, intellect, or income. So you don't have to know every little detail of the inner workings, but at least work for a solid grasp on the big picture plan and why it exists. You will be doing yourself and society at large a huge favor. I'm going to wind down and sum it up um, right there because we could be here all evening. Today, I talked about the misconceptions about women's relationship with money, the common money habits um, that do not serve women, and the slow financial paradigm shift um, that we are observing in women. Um, so before I forget, let me share my contact information. Uh, you can reach me by sending me an email at mj at mariejocesar.com or by sending me a DM, a direct message via Messenger. Now, I'm going to leave you with these last thoughts. As professional women, with or without families, we have a lot on our plates, right? But financial soundness should be a priority because having a plan is empowering, okay? Being burdened with debts or lack of a retirement fund can cause undue stress and anxiety, but you can do something about it now. It is never too late to learn and build your financial literacy skills as free education, as well as consultation with knowledgeable financial investment professional are available for all, okay? The internet is a great resource. And most of, most of us as a, have at least one phone with data and free Wi-Fi is all over. So men and women alike are interesting complex and striving human being. They are not the balance sheets, okay? So talking about the values behind the numbers is key for positive financial outcomes and harnessing your emotion can be a powerful tool for positive change. So as you know, I like to end the show with a quote. And while doing my research, I found a quote from a lady named Nasima McElroy. I've never heard of her before, but she's an author and a, and a financial blogger. And it reads, financial independence is more than dollars in the bank. It is about living your best life now and replacing the have-to-dos with the get-to-dos. So for more information about how to achieve financial wellness with the, from the inside out and live a purposeful life with the money you have, join me next week, Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time for my Bermuda peeps, and 10 a.m. Friday, Brisbane, Australia time. I will be talking about the importance of taking control of your finances. 
Thank you for being here today on the Learning on the Merging Life and Money Show. I am your host, Marie Jo César. I will be back again next week. Until then, continue merging life and money. Bye for now. Thank you.